you go to a physician with rheumatoid arthritis or multiple sclerosis, for both of which there's plenty of evidence about the role of trauma and stress, but the doctor's never going to ask you about any of that stuff. I understand that there is a very real awakening taking place. There is a true spiritual awakening that is happening on this planet. But to see it unfold in the way that it's unfolding, like Hollywood couldn't write this. AI couldn't write this. And to be fair, most of the things that Hollywood has been writing have not been that impressive. So they definitely couldn't write this. And AI is just stealing everybody else's ideas. So we know how that goes. But let's get into this video. That, the reason I'm you know, doing this one specifically. It's not my fourth video with Dr. Gabor Mate and technically second with Theo Vaughn because the last one I did was them talking about um, the, the regrets of individuals on their deathbed, right? There's like the regrets of dying people is a book that was written by forget her name. She was mentioned in the last video. So make sure to watch that one. If this one tickles your fancy, can you say something like that? I, okay. Let me stop saying phrases. I do not know where they come from because y'all know how the internet is. One day, this is going to get dug back up, and they're like, look what he said back then. He was singing a Frosty the Snowman, and that's a racist anthem. So, that being said, I want to get into this. I want to have a cool little sit down with you guys. We're going to have a little back and forth. If you want to watch the video by itself without me stopping, starting, and, and giving my two cents, you can click the link below and watch the video. Show some love to the brother Theo Vaughn. I think the dude is hilarious. Um, and Dr. Gabor Mate is somebody who has been profound as a, as a teacher from afar within my own life. So shout out to him. 80 years deep and, and he's going, pause, no, no diddy. A 80 years in. Book that I've read so far, it's about, it's getting to the part where it's like uh, that Western medicine doesn't always take into context. And mind you, Theo Vaughn is like the last person, again, you would expect to be having these conversations, but he's having his own awakening. Never be fooled by the jester. The jester is oftentimes the wisest one, the one who's observing everything and the one who's deeping these messages. So he's reading Dr. Gabor Mate's book and, you know, he's even able to quote it, et cetera. This is impressive stuff, man. Proud of you, brother. Really am. As much that the body and the mind, like us as an entire thing, as our society, as, you know, it's almost like, in, like if, say, if like the whole world and time and culture and everything were a car yeah. instead of the doctor looking at the car they just look at the human which would just be one part of the car yeah and so they're always just working on this one part instead of looking at the whole car which could yeah. also be a cause of why the part isn't doing well that's the whole point and um <clears throat> see what see we have to make a distinction here there's western science okay then there's the medical practice. Understood. The two are not the same necessarily. Okay, thank you. So I was you. trained as a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever taught, taught me about the mind-body unity. But physiologically, you can't separate the mind from the body so that our emotional circuits and the immune system and the hormonal apparatus and the nervous system are actually one system. They're not separate systems. So when things happen emotionally, naturally they have a physiological effect. Yeah. You know, so I could give you 10,000 examples. Children whose parents are stressed are much more likely to have asthma. Children of what? So children who are, whose parents are stressed are much more likely to have asthma. Okay. So their the airway is narrow and they get inflamed. Black, there's a study that showed that black American women the more episodes of racism they experience, the higher the risk of asthma. Wow. Um, it's been shown that women with severe PTSD have doubled the risk of ovarian cancer. Wow. This is a study out of Harvard University. Um, adults who experience the loss of an adult child have a higher risk of malignancy of the, of the bone marrow and, and, and the blood. Grief. Uh, grief. A Danish study parents who lost a child have doubled the risk of multiple sclerosis. There are hundreds of studies showing the physical, physiological impact of stress and trauma and loss on the physiology. So manifesting itself in our bodies as a disease or contributing to... Contributing to the onset of the disease. Got it. And, um, yeah, because cancer, it's like, you know, you, you, you say in the book, like, people get cancer a lot of times you hear like the guy got cancer he died three weeks later right yeah. you hear that all the time but the cancer had been there forever yeah and it just enough had happened i guess that it 
turned over into being well malignant. we know that stress for example can turn off genes that protect you against cancer and turn on genes that can cause cancer really yeah yeah, yeah it's not even controversial key word right there can turn off the genes this is a message of personal empowerment and that's why I believe that the institutions at large, the ones who are benefiting off of uh, subscription, medication, process, I guess we would call it, right? Because everything that we buy continuously throughout life, month after month, bottle after bottle, is a prescri- uh, subscription. So your prescription is a subscription. And you always want to find yourself a reoccurring customer. It's the same model as Netflix is using. That's what Big Pharma has used for the beginning of it, of its inception, right? Is how do we get people to buy from us for good? So it's not we're going to look to cure people. We're not going to look to eradicate these diseases. We're not going to inform them on how to do so for themselves. No, 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 no. What we're going to do is get you on our subscription of a prescription for a lifetime. And so a sick patient, a diseased patient is a profitable patient. This isn't conspiracy. This is straight facts. But I won't leave it just there. I will also say that we indeed have the power when we stop opting into that system, the Western quote unquote medicine system or medical system that has been deceiving most. And we know that people that repress their healthy anger, they're actually suppressing their immune system. Wow. And this, this stuff has been studied over and over again. And great clinicians have been recognizing this forever. Mm. And in 2,400 years ago, Socrates, the Greek philosopher, said that the problem with the doctors of today is that they separate the mind from the body. Wow. 2,400 years ago. Now, I can name you any... 2,400 years ago, this was already known, that there was going to be a continuous separation of the mind and the body. And to be fair, I have been as guilty of that as anybody, perpetuating information which was, you know, here for the mind or here for the brain and then here for the body, when in truth, as he is articulating better than I ever could, is that it's the same thing. Any number of great medical pioneers, I mentioned some of them in the book, who 150 years ago, 100 years ago, 80 years ago, 40 years ago, pointed out, that mind and body can't be separated, that in fact we are biopsychosocial creatures, which means that our biology is inseparable from our psyche, our emotional apparatus, and from our social relationships. Wow, so all of it. It's all one. It's Scientifically, it's all one. The problem is medical practice doesn't recognize that oneness. Yeah. So most of the time, you go to a physician with rheumatoid arthritis or multiple sclerosis, for both of which there's plenty of evidence about the role of trauma and stress, but the doctor's never gonna ask you about any of that stuff. They're just gonna deal you with the phys- deal with the physical aspects of it, which they should deal with, Right. but they also need to look at the whole, you know, what happened in this person's life and what's stressing them now, like how, and how can we help with that part of it, you know? so. Medical practice, as a doctor, I don't know if to be told how miraculously effective the achievements of modern medicine can be. Oh, for sure. But at the same time, there's a huge piece that we're missing, and that piece is not just intuitive or spiritual, woo-hoo, it's science. But they don't teach that mind-body unity science in the medical schools. And they tried to defame it or they tried to belittle it by calling it woo-woo, right? The woo-woo statement, the you know, the tinfoil hat, whatever it may be, was used as a way to defame anything that was outside of what they wanted the populace, the, the, the masses to accept as reality or as truth. But you can't hide it. The, like the Oz has been revealed, you know? And he's, he's Richard Pryor. Yeah, y'all might not catch that reference. It's okay. <laughs> we grew up on the uh, what it was it, the Wiz, not the Wizard of Oz, but the Wiz. So, yeah, they have taught us a model of you know of health that is based upon the specific organ. This organ is problematic. This part of you, it is obviously the 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 vascular system. It is no, all is one. It's all connected. 
when you are stressing the individual or the individual is under perpetual stress, perpetual fear, whatever it may be, the body is literally releasing these stress hormones, cortisol, adrenaline, the other one, epinephrine. I can't, for some reason, I can't grasp the rhythm of that word, but I will soon, trust me, mark my words. But the stress hormones are triggered and you're perpetually like a drip system overflowing your system with toxins, of course it's going to lead to physical dis-ease. But instead, they're not going to ask you about that. They're just going to say, what's wrong with you? Okay, this hurts. Here's a pill. In the medical schools. Yeah, in fact, the piece is a hole. That's what they're missing. They're, That's missing. They're, they're missing the wholeness. Now, if you look at the indigenous medicine, yeah, there's the medicine wheel, which consists of four quadrants. Mm -hmm. There's the physical, our physiology. Mm -hmm. There's the mental, which is our emotions and our thoughts. There's the social, which is our relationships with other people and other creatures. And then there's the spiritual, which is our connection with something greater than just a little ego, however you define that. And health, they say, depends on a balance between those four quadrants. Mm. Scientifically, that's totally true. But unfortunately, that science is largely ignored in medical training. I'm sure, yeah. Well, especially now, a lot of our medicine has kind of been compromised, or I think our industry has, you know? Oh, yeah. Maybe, I don't know, and I don't know your industry, and I'm not trying to offend it, but it certainly seems like just, you know, the, it's been, most industries have been a lot of, comp have been compromised, you know? The, the fact yeah. to have better, you know, balance sheets than... Um, but look, if you come to me with depression, mm -hmm. By the way, that's another diagnosis that I've had. So I've, I've actually taken medication for depression. So I'm not here to, you're not just guessing. D you know, d you know, to dismiss them. Yeah. But if you look at the word depression, what does it actually mean to depress something? Hold it back. It's to push it down. Yeah. Now, what gets pushed on in depression? Your feelings. Our feelings. Now, why would a person push down their feelings? One of the needs of the child. One of the essential needs of the child, as I pointed out in this book, I don't make this stuff up, I just report it, mm -hmm. is to be able to f experience all their emotions. That's one of my favorite sayings, by the way. I've never heard him say that before, but that's a bar. I always say this. I say, look, I'm just the bearer of the information. I'm just the teller. I'm just the sharer. That's it. I'm not the one who made this stuff up. Don't get mad at me. Anger, grief. Fear, panic, um, love, playfulness, curiosity, um, uh, lust for life, and just hunger for life. The, the child doesn't need to express all those emotions when they arise and have that understood, accepted, and validated by the adults. Now, if I'm in an environment where the parents can't do that, you've had guests on this program, I won't mention them by name, who teach that an angry child should be made to sit by themselves until they come back to normal. Mm -hmm. No. Right. A, a, a two-year-old kid gets frustrated, they get angry. If you give that kid the message that if you're angry, you can't be with me, the child is, is in an impossible dilemma. Ooh. I separate myself from a person on whom I like. I hope all my parents, as well as future parents, Really internalize what he just said right there. When you tell your child that their emotions are invalid or wrong, when they're quote unquote negatively expressed and you push them away, you cannot be around me or us. There's a form of rejection. The child is in a state of dissonance. And oftentimes when we punish, let's be honest, we do it from a, a selfish place because we feel some type of way. Maybe we feel inadequate. I'm not a good enough parent. I'm not doing X, Y, and Z. So we project it onto the child or we're just projecting our own fears and insecurities and the worries as opposed to actually tending to where this child is, which could be a powerful learning lesson, a teaching tool for us. But, you know, to each their own, right? You no, know, my life depends or will I push down my anger? Well, give that message to the kid often enough, what are they going to do? Push it down. Depress their feelings. 
30 years later, they're diagnosed with this disease called depression. Mm. You know, now, if you come to me with depression, I might decide that temporarily it might be a good idea for you to be an antidepressants. And I've taken them. They helped me for a while, mm -hmm. you know, but it's not enough. Let's also look at what made you push down your feelings, what happened to you. Now, prescribing the antidepressant takes me three minutes. Right. Talking with you about what actually happened to you that made you push down your feelings, that takes a long time. Right. And doctors are not even trained to raise that question. So even if as a physician, I don't have the expertise to deal with that question, mm -hmm. at least I could refer you to somebody who does. Yeah. But no, most of the time, it's just the industrial model. You come in, I got five minutes with you, here's the prescription, goodbye. Well, that doesn't deal with the underlying problem. It deals with the symptom, which may sometimes be helpful, sometimes it isn't, but whether it's helpful or not, it does not deal with the underlying dr dynamic. Wow. Once again, Theo, I'm proud of you. Dr. Gabor Mate, thank you for sitting down with any and everybody. And he, there must have been some former discussion where you understood like, okay, there's a shift going on here. Because this is, this is reading like a therapy session to me. But um, my closing statement, um, it's not even going to be that much of a statement, to be honest. I'm just curious where you guys are in your own journey. I'm curious about your own stories, just to share your story amongst each other, one another. And um, yeah, I'll be honest with you guys, like that, that hit me different when I was listening to that. I've been on this healing journey and doing the shadow work, etc. But for some reason, when he mentioned that aspect of again, depression and how anger suppressed, because that's my own story. My story is of a child who was not allowed to be angry and was, you know, was punished physically for, for displaying any sort of anger. It wasn't a timeout in our household. It was like, you're going to get severely punished. And so I learned how to suppress. I learned how to pretend. And I, and I expressed that anger in the most unhealthy ways. And there's still aspects of that probably in me at this moment, which is probably what's surfacing right now. It's like, I want to spend a little more time with that. Wow. Because I just saw images in my, in my mind like, damn, that's, yeah, that's the moment right there when you were lashing and you felt some type of way because my parental system just couldn't fathom. They couldn't understand. We're, we grew up in a, in a model of, of, you know, the child is misbehaving, so you need to you need to put them in their place. You need to punish them. And that's not what I needed. That's not what any of us needed. What we needed was to be affirmed in what we we're going through and to understand what these emotions meant and to move past those emotions as opposed to stuffing those emotions down, pretend they don't exist, and then expressing them in the most unhealthy forms. Whew, this one hit different. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm just curious to know you guys' own um, take on this. Uh, or anything else that's top of mind, you know. This is an open space, so do as you will. Even if you want to show a little bit of hate, you got something to say, say it. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. Love you. Peace. Uh, I used to be afraid of the dark. A place unknown like a heart in their heart. I, I used to see my life in the bar. Now the kids unchained, every shackle is lost. Two steps in the moonlight. Two steps in the daytime. You just know when it feel right You got a feeling the time's not yeah. See you through those shades that I just threw on Through my lenses you just can't do no wrong yeah. Fell in love with myself again yeah. I fell in love with myself I fell in love with the sunshine. I fell in love with the light. I fell in love with the full moon. I fell in love with the night. I can see.